Good morning. It's so good to be with you here on this Father's Day. Often I have a lame joke about what fathers want for uh, Father's Day. Oftentimes mothers want all their children to go to church with them on Mother's Day. A beautiful thing. They get a corsage. They come to church. And what do fathers want for Father's Day? They want a fishing pole and they want to stay home from church. If you didn't know, it is free fishing this weekend for folks in the whole state of Ohio. So if you don't have a fishing license, today is the last day to fish without a fishing license. Otherwise, you better get one tomorrow morning. Being that said, today's scripture is a doozy when it comes to fathers. If we would have read the Hebrew scriptures today, we would have heard about Father Abraham and Sarah and Hagar and Ishmael. And we'd hear about the 13-year-old Ishmael mouthing off at Isaac's birthday party. Well, the 13-year-old couldn't keep his mouth shut, and Sarah had had enough. So she throws out Hagar and Ishmael into the desert. And Father Abraham, what does he do? He doesn't say anything. But God has a plan. God sends an angel to bring water and a blessing to Ishmael. That Ishmael would be a father to many nations, as well as Isaac. Today's scripture in the gospel is just as perplexing. These are not the scriptures, folks, you want on Father's Day. Let me say this. I don't even know what I'm doing here talking to you about these scriptures. If I were to pick scriptures... I would not have chosen these for sure. The Gospel of Matthew talks about how father will go against the son and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Now that part for some of us we might see. And one foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And who does not, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. You know, what a strange text. You know, these sayings of Jesus are not parables. They're not a narrative in a, a broader pericope, if you will, or a, a, a narrative. We don't, we don't have that happening to, for us this morning. What we have are a lump of sayings of Jesus. It's kind of like the, the writer of Matthew says, you know, these are important, but we don't know what to do with them. So you know what? I'm just going to put them right here smack. Hopefully you're going to get some good out of them. In the early church, things were very difficult. The world was very complicated. That the Roman Empire was out to kill Christians. The Jewish leaders who were the foundation of the Christian faith were out to get Christians as well. We find that fathers and mothers would be against each other. That we find that it was not above anything in the time period for a... Um, loving father to call in on their son or daughter who had joined the faith. We find that this happens again and again over time. 
it makes me wonder what it is about our nature. What it is that turns loving father and devoted son against one another. It makes me wonder about what it is that puts daughter and mother-in-law uh, pitted together, pitted against each other, excuse me. What is this? Where have we gone wrong? You know, the love of God has been given for us. But you know, understanding that love of God, I think, takes time. It takes education. It takes a willingness to devote yourself to searching God's face through the Holy Scriptures, through the church community, through prayer. When we begin to look and delve into our spirituality, our faith, within the constructs of our religion, we find a way to make amends. We find a way to take what is broken and put it back to right. You know, I'm a part of a group called Ashtabula Grow, uh, Grows Online Community. Uh, each Tuesday, uh, Ashtabula Grows has a certain kind of uh, class to teach people how to garden. Now, for many of us, we have learned how to garden from our parents. Um, we've learned how to garden through our grandparents. And for whatever reason, it skipped a generation in my, uh, my family. Uh, both my sister and I and my cousins um, all grow vegetables in our yards. Um, we're all very uh, concerned with the environment. But our parents, however, don't have very much growing know-how. So it's been through opportunities like Ashtabula Grows and watching YouTube videos and reading books that we've kind of caught up on how to grow things. Well, anyways, this past week I, I heard a story of how uh, Mary Howe had a uh, peach tree that was damaged in the wind. It was a peach tree she's had for several years. And that peach tree... Uh, had a limb that broke and is just dangling there. It's still connected, but for all intents and purposes, it's broken. Well, she asked what to do with it, and um, the best thing you can do with something like that is to bind it up. To take a, uh, some tape and you can hold it up and you can you can tie it together. Um, and that uh, eventually it'll make a scar. But right now as it's hanging, fruit is developing. The xylem and the phloem are still going up and down the branches. The branch is alive and producing fruit. You know, it's through the love of God the Father, our gardener, that comes to us and helps us to bear fruit. Many of us seem like we may be broken, that we've had hard childhoods where our fathers weren't the most loving fathers. It wasn't father knows best. It wasn't an Andy Griffith type of childhood. Shoot, it wasn't even a uh, Roseanne father situation with Dan Connor being the dad of our family. But God comes to us and mends those broken parts of our lives. We have opportunities our whole life long to bear fruit. Even when we seem like we are broken and damaged through the winds of this world. God's love is there for us. 
binding us up. And as we are bound through the love of Jesus Christ, the Spirit nurtures the nutrients that we need. That healing xylem and phloem that, that brings to us the beautiful green photosynthesis of God. Allowing us to grow and reach towards the sun. This is the Father's Day lesson that I would like us to hear that fathers have their shortcomings those of us who are fathers know this those of us who are children of fathers know this but the love of god is something that is complete and provides a blessing for us when we're thrown out into the desert or into the wilderness experience god is there to pick us up God is there to dust us off and say, I have a plan for you. I have a blessing for you that you are my child and I have called you by name. That I have sent my ministering angels to surround you and to uphold you. So with that strength, those blessings we have, with that fruit that has been developed through the hardships of this life, let us go out and share the love of God. Let us be mentors, both fathers and mothers. Let us be devoted to sharing the love of God when our world is mixed up. When father sets against son and mother against daughter, let us find a new way to exist. Let us find a new way to love that is very much a part of the old, old story. Let us be a people who love and serve God the Father, who promises us good things. Not easy things, but good things. Good things that will help us on our journey. Good things that will help us to produce the fruit of God. Those holy things that enable us to live our best life, whatever the cost. Amen and amen.